So, we have with us a very eminent person, Mr. V. Nagapan. Anne on the Chennai Learn the next morning, he has come exclusively to address us. And Dr. Chonamari, he was in Bombay earlier and now he has come here and Nalik Anema Tri Bombay Purilane. Tripi and the Marichonanga, Pandona Tripi on Po in Dirk Argent or Kunjuli. So, Anne on the he is a gold medalist in MBA. And uh, he is a Rotarian. I can be proud about it. Now, Mary Lou wrote it over again. And uh, he is a Rotarian. And uh, he is a member of a uh, lot of forums. Uh, some of them are Hindustan Chamber of Commerce, Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, Andhra Chamber of Commerce, Madras Management Association, Tamil Nadu Investor Association, Securities and Time Share Owners Welfare Association, the Indus Entrepreneurs, and various other organizations like Blue Cross, Intax, so many things. And Anna Vandhi, he has served as, he is serving as an independent director of TNPL, Tamil Nadu Newsprint and Papers, and Tamil Nadu Power Finance, and uh, Tamil Nadu Industrial Development Corporation Limited, TITCO. Anna Vandhi, he is the treasurer of Hindustan Chamber of Commerce at Chennai, and chairman of Expert Committee of Economic Affairs at uh, Hindustan Chamber of Commerce. And he is currently the uh, member board of studies of Madras University, Commerce Department and Economic Department, and at Kalasalingam University and at DG Vaishnava College. Anne has been a stockbroker uh, since 1992 and he was a director at uh, MSc and uh, uh, director till 2012. And uh, he has uh, served as member of the high level committee formed by Tamil Nadu government to revisit various policies and guidelines of disinvestments of state public sector undertakings. Anna, he is, he is uh, a regular person who gives lectures and he is a visiting faculty of eminent institution like Indian Institute of Management, IIT and uh, Capital Market Regulations and Personal Finance. He is a regular writer and columnist and uh, a lot of his articles have been compiled in the form of a books. Anna not a wife, he, uh, Chitra Achi, she is a postgraduate in psychology and counselling and she is daughter of uh, Sabharatnam Chittiyar of O Sirvayal. She has been of great strength to Annan in his professional life. And Nagapan sir's uh, son, Mr. Mayapan, elder son, Mr. Mayapan, is a Supreme Court lawyer. He specializes in uh, international taxation and he is practicing at Bombay after graduating from Cambridge University. His second son, Sabha, is pursuing CA and CPA. Okay. And in, uh, in fact, Nathan is walking by the way, the wife is going to be a little bit. That's why I'm going to meet him. Nagapan is going to be a little bit. That's why I'm going to be a so the thing is he is so popular and he is widely read, he is well respected and he is among with us today to talk about the basics of GST and how we can gain from it. And let us all welcome Nayapran with a round of applause. But the thing is GST is going to impact each and every one of us. So, please make note of it and this is like a private audience, Mary. We need not really hesitate and vote on it now. Yeah. Do you want to come to the next one? Thank you, Ram Swami, for that nice introduction. And I don't remember sending this photo. Somebody got it in the night, I think. Yeah. So, Two good things which has happened to our community in the last few years is one is IBCN and the second one is NCC, Nagaradar Chamber of Commerce, which is um, when the time changes, when the generation changes, new set of people come in, uh, we should also change our attitude. In the coil limit, community networking, next level we are going. I think these two are very important, critical. Every transition provision, GST is important. This is a transition time and uh, right time these two has happened and I think uh, uh, the credit really goes to our community people without in both if you notice the best thing about this is that no one single individual is highlighted I mean nobody is uh, got that is something important because a couple of years back I came to Madurai to address a chamber and that was a community based chamber I refused to come initially but then they said Dilla sir you will really like it nobody was there on the dais all of them were sitting and the community period and uh, only the whoever speaks like the same thing what we adopt here I think this should continue and uh, you were talking about ask about business business except doctor I think anybody can ask for business <laughs> here so 
<coughs> because I, it was something new to me. 96 when I went to uh, Anand Rathi's office in Bombay. He was a very big stock broker. And they used to call clients. And coming from Mira Stock Exchange, we never used to call clients. Clients only used to call us. So, client to Cooper Rangarath, it's a new concept for me. But today, my dealer calls the clients, call in the evening, we only keep calling the clients and ask for business. Okay. So, uh, that is very important in a Thai Chennai, if any one of you have come to the Indus Entrepreneur Chennai. Yeah. So, there they have aggressive networking session. They will have 100 cards in the hand. Next half an hour, they have to introduce themselves very briefly and uh, networking happens in a very aggressive manner. Uh, now, coming to GST part. One very leading Tamil newspaper, uh, I gave this idea to them that you should do this program about a month back. And in fact, in Nikur meeting at Chennai, he sent me the photo right now. The hall is completely full, and uh, people are standing outside, they've given connections, and all this common, all, all women. Uh, GST is such a burning topic today. Why is it? See, basically, it's going to be a very big game changer for us. Um, but of course, it is carrying the legacy. Legacy issues are still there. We thought that it will be one tax, but it's going to be again multiple slab rates. But tax is one. Why is it needed? We have direct tax, which is simple, income tax. Nothing else. Maybe corporate tax or wealth tax was there, but basically income tax. But when it comes to indirect taxes, you have customs, you have additional customs duty, you have excise, you have SAD, and you have service tax, CST, SENVAT, OCTRA, luxury tax, entertainment tax, and, uh, ad and added to that you have a lot of other CES also, uh, which we don't know how to classify it because CES is going to be there even uh, post GST. Krishi Kalyan CES or uh, um, education CES or higher education CES, they keep innovating. So, so many things are there, it's really confusing. What government want? Government wants revenue, that's all. Okay, why should they confuse us with this? You know, everything keeps adding to one more line in the Infosys or tally will make money more out of us than us making money. So, they wanted to simplify the procedure and uh, compliance Jasti uh, this was brought in. Now, why there is a price difference between Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry? Basically, differential tax structure. Now, that has to be corrected. A state has to progress based on its own merit, not based on the differential taxation. So that's one more thing which if you look at it. If you look at system law, there a lot of loopholes are there that will be plugged in in GST and uh, between department communication. You know, you can easily escape saying that I have done this with one department and uh, both the departments will not interact or it will take long time for them to get an answer. Something funny happened sometime back, very recently within a one department, government department in Delhi. They issued a notice to two divisions of the department that you please interact here after with each other and exchange information. That's uh, the situation. So, in the GST, everything is under one thing. Now, this was, I mean, the past one of the one reason and another, absolutely there is no difference between the main opposition party and the ruling party. They are only posturing. The posturing was handled well and then uh, one nation, one market and one taxation. One nation and one market is fine, but one taxation, GST in repair, like the slab is going to be, I don't know how many slabs are there. They said four, right? But four in Lebo Gold, we have another slab, and the CES is there. So, uh, for want of time, I think I'll skip this now. Okay. This slide is something little important. If you look at it, central government taxes is Allah. And the first three columns are central government taxes. The last fourth column is state government tax, right? There is another way of looking at it. If you look at the first column, uh, first row, non-creditable taxes. creditable taxes. If you are buying from someone and selling to someone, you can take input credit. Mailer can also input credit. You or uh, central uh, sales tax or uh, um, additional, special additional uh, duty or uh, not special additional duty, additional customs. And in addition to that, there is uh, luxury tax. Now, what happens to that is, is one that this becomes cost of the product for you, for the dealer, for the distributor. Depending upon the tax, cost added, input tax as a credit. When it show the example, you can see that how it is now. Now, all are going to be subsumed into um, the sales tax, the GST. 
it could be uh, SGST, it could be uh, CGST or IGST, but all are part of GST. Okay. Now look at this. This is the basic structure. Now the simplified structure is going to be like this. One is GST. Now intrastate movement in the the same GST will be split it into two. Half, 50% of it will be central GST. 50% of it will be state GST. Interstate movement in the only one part integrated GST. Right. Now what is interstate movement? I mean many of you will know, but I'm just uh, for those who are not very familiar with this, I'll explain. If within the state, now with on or a treatment, outside the state with on or a treatment, rendu or a tax tam, tax slab or the percentage is the same, but then it will be split it into two uh, when it is sold within the state. If Tamil Nadu produce panni, Tamil Nadu with the there will be SGST as well as CGST. Tamil Nadu produce panni, Karnataka la there will be only IGST. Right? Now, what will happen is, uh, this, this is, there is another thing if you look at this, that the present system is where you produce. Tamil Nadu on the Hyundai car manufacture panranga, build panni anupuranga na, inga sales tax katti to pono. It may be sold in Andhra, it may be sold in Hyderabad, it may be sold in um, um, uh, Karnataka. But in the end of the Tamil Nadu land produce hai valiya pora pono tax katti yadhi, yenga poh vikkarang lo, anga thana vandha tax pora pono. That's the implication. So when it is sold there, that state will receive the benefit and this is one reason why Tamil Nadu government objected to uh, GST because Tamil Nadu is a manufacturing state, we have surplus manufacturing facility than what our population needs. So we export, net exported to other states. So other states will be the revenue we seek compensation and that is the reason why Bihar is the first state to accept pass GST bill. Okay, because for them it's going to be a revenue. All along their people are, you know, hard earned wages, they are buying the products manufactured in Tamil Nadu. But then the money was coming to, the tax was coming to Tamil Nadu. Now it will go to them. Of course, this will leave with such a question that if Tamil Nadu efficient are under the penalty. That's why they are seeking the compensation and other things. Okay. So this is what the structure is going to be. When it is sold in um, Karnataka, other state, it will be split. Okay. Now let us look at what will be in included, what is not included into uh, CGST. Excise duty will be there, service tax will be there and this is one reason why they passed the constitutional amendment. As per the constitution, um, state governments has got some power to charge certain taxes, central government has got power to charge certain taxes. If CGST, IGST, GST, the moon on our there, both the taxes are going to match. So the government should have power to charge this. Without power, how can they charge? That comes from the constitution. So they went for the constitutional amendment that is going to merge our sales tax, VAT, then VAT or whatever it is, service tax, excise, is the LA thing may render and collect under the powers of Ramari. Constitution was amended, which that is the main reason everything got delayed earlier. Okay. Now you look at alcohol, that is not included meant for human consumption is not included, industrial alcohol uh, will be there. Okay. Now all other uh, um, CES uh, entertainment and education and luxury tax, of course CES I do not think it will be uh, included that you have to remove it. Stamp duty is not there, GST or stamp duty, um, vehicle taxes, electricity taxes, these are all not there. Uh, these are all the steps in the past which has already happened, is LMA over for now, we are waiting for. Tamil Nadu state government and a few other state government to pass the bill uh, act and then once it is done um, the, uh, by before July 1st they have to do that I think in the current is a GST rules LMS only done okay this PPT was prepared a little earlier so um, at that point of time it was not ready now all all are ready but still it is work in progress it is still a lot of uh, um, changes are happening even in the there is a meeting some uh, changes might happen in this GST network is a public private partnership where uh, it is going to handle the entire uh, thing, um, the workload, um, file pointer returns, LMA one, it will be online and that will be handled by the GSTN or GST network. And LMA digital, cashless, is anything more than 10,000, any payment will be only by uh, digital payment and um, and to make it more simple, to make, to help people, they have also appointed GSPs and ASPs, um, application service provider, 
who will act as a wrapper or a cover or, or in between, bridge between the GSC network and you in case if you need help. And the GSP uh, Suvida providers, GSC Suvida providers are also there. The GST Suvida provider himself can be ASP also, okay. Right now about 35 or 40 GSPs, 33 is there and more they are going to appoint, I think another 20, 30 they are going to appoint. ASP Narayar Ganga. So, Tally is uh, coming out with uh, such uh, software which will capture, it can go, if you are a trader you can take, you can directly handle this, the GST filing returns everything or there are some software which are, which will even, it will sit on your system, connect to the GST and network through GSP, it can capture the data from you, just enough, 10 30 return file pound on enough, tick on up or this, just that the form will be ready, it will capture all the data, you just have to ok it and file it, uh, digital signature attached money, that's all. That's the role of GSPs and uh, ASPs. <coughs> Yesterday, many of these GSPs have told government that we are not ready. We are not ready to handle this. So, we don't know how they are going to handle it, but GSP, but GSP, even when they feel that they are not ready, I don't know how government will react. And this is how it functions, you know, uh, this is the GST system, this is the traders or the taxpayers and uh, it can be either GSP, ASP, one of them or it can be, it can go through ASP and GSP. Yeah, 34 GSPs is what you said, yeah. <coughs> Again, the same system, how it functions, this is explained, yeah. I was mentioning whether sale or supply. Supply is important. Um, Sales connected to the club. The moment it is supplied from my factory to it goes to uh, Karnataka, then it is considered as a supply. Even without sale, it can go to my stock point, it is considered as sale. And this is one reason that many companies uh, who had stock points or uh, warehouses, now they will be doing restructuring. They may not be doing it for the purpose of tax. Only when they need it, logistical purpose, they will do it. If they don't need it for tax purpose, they will not do it hereafter. Uh, companies like Leyland are uh, doing a lot of work in this, um, Hiromoto, uh, Motocar, uh, most of the two-wheeler companies are also looking at this seriously now. Tamil Nadu government, I explained earlier that uh, because of GST, there is going to be a probable loss of somewhere close to 10,000 crores, that is what they claim. We don't know. At the end of five years, we will know that what is the actual loss. But uh, many other state governments kept quiet, but Tamil Nadu fought for this and then they asked for the compensation, 100% compensation, they were able to get it also. So next to 5 years ago, whatever be the loss, um, they will calculate it and then it is going to be 100% it will be compensated. Compensation Act is also passed in the parliament. It needed a legislation, it is passed already. And they will be charging some compensation cess and all, in alcohol, certain products they are going to charge compensation cess, uh, tobacco products and all. So that will be making uh, make over the loss but after five years um, the GST council will decide GST council has got enormous powers they will decide what will be the way forward most probably after five years my reading is that and I also spoke to many people that many of the state governments will not ask for any compensation basically because the collections are going to go up and basically because of the complaints higher complaints level the taxes are going to go up the tax collection the efficiency of GST network and um, you know because everything is captured today right from the manufacturer till the last uh, place because I did this program this is this was uh, it's actually I am trying to compress it this was a three hour program which I did for Nippon Paint dealers. So uh, wherever I went uh, particularly Vellur and uh, some parts other places and all Sir Anjurvai Gurda Aani Ke Karana Ipdi Adhikala Bill Putti Trukka Mudi Ma Business Apa Gurda Ala Bill Putti Trukka Mudi Ma but I told them that even somebody sells one uh, dolo or uh, saridon or something, medical shop, they prepare a bill. They are supposed to prepare a bill. They do that. Why don't you? So the main concern seems to be that all along they have been avoiding tax. Now you cannot avoid tax because it is a GSC, the number itself is a PAN number. It captures 12 digit in between is PAN number out of the 15 digits. So everything is tracked. GSC council, GSC network, all they have powers to ask for bank details, whatever transactions you have done. So they can have phenomenal powers to go ahead do it. So, this is one reason but complaints just here the Nala, the loss for the state governments will not be much in real terms when we see after five years. 
And Tamil Nadu state government objected also to one more reason because in the GST council the representation is one state one person. Though the voting pattern is one third for central government, two third for states. Okay, voting power. But 30, 31, 30 states, 30 or 31 uh, uh, states are there. Each one has got one vote. So Tamil Nadu government said that how can you give one voting power to Meghalaya or Manipur which has got a population of few lakhs and uh, we have seven crores population, you give us one. Should be like parliamentary representation, Andamari Rakuno, or at least you give us more votes. In the, but I think that they have not accepted it. Okay, this is what I said the point of sale. Okay, point of sale, Nala Tamil Nadu Gulas Urban Sona. The basic purpose of GST is same tax for all the 130 crore people, like how income tax is same for all. It is not, it doesn't vary from state to state or uh, places. So it, this is this is this is the main purpose, and simplify the procedures. Look, Hyundai or someone wants to start a factory or some business in India. Uh, it will take a long time for us to explain the entire tax. You know, all of us got some received on uh, message in the WhatsApp. You know, tax lang katron or period liste vandu. So if you look at those taxes, they will get confused because they are all used to simple tax systems. You know, for example, I think. If I am right in Singapore or Malaysia, the GST is 7% or 9%. Uh, so, it is only one tax which you pay in uh, indirect tax. So, to increase the compliance, to increase the number of taxpayers, well, uh, as I mentioned, all these things are central, all these things are state government taxes. GST Instead of this, what will happen now is that MRP, Iperika system on the MRP plus Central excess plus VAT. Hereafter, it will be transaction value, which they have issued a guideline, transaction value guidelines um, last year. Or there is another methodology available in your industry wise, uh, which is basically the bill value. There will be some small difference in certain cases. Plus either CGST plus SGST, which is central GST plus state GST or IGST. Okay. It depends upon where the sale happens, either this will come or this will happen. Again, uh, the same uh, thing explained here. Okay. Now, what is the difference between central uh, GST and uh, state GST or IGST? Okay. Now, you look at, let's say that 20% uh, tax GST or product technology, 20% is not there, 18 and 28. For example, I am just taking 18% tax. Or product, or state la manufacture, or other state, la nama vikaram na, 20% GST it will be split into two, central GST and state GST. That is if, if you if you manufacture in one state and if you are selling in the same state. Now contrary to this, you look at IGST. If you produce in one state and you are selling into another state, same 20% tax, but uh, there will be a share which will go to that particular state. Okay. So that is that will be credited into IGST. Though it is so it will be CGST plus IGST. That will be like that. Here, if you look at it, CGST plus SGST. Here, CGST plus IGST, but it will not be called as uh, um, CGST, it will be called as IGST only. I'll give you some examples. Right now it is not included. There is something more which are not included. Property tax they said 5, 12, 18, 28, 4 slab of din sonanga. Originally when GST came, they were supposed to have one, only one slab, like in many other countries. But that is not possible in a democratic setup like India, where we have wide range of taxes. At one go, you cannot control everything. If a chartered accountant sitting here, you know that, you know, when in 1970 or 71, I was looking at it, the taxation level was more than 91%, income tax. More than 91%. If you are earning 10 lakhs in a year, 9 lakh 10,000 will be the tax, income tax. So from there we have come a long way to this. So it, the GST also will take, it is not a perfect system, right? If you are going to wait for a perfect system, then it will never happen. We are going to have tremendous problem, a teething problem, trouble, over But in spite of that, one or two years later, if you look at it, it is going to be much better than the current system. So they started with 5, 12, 18, 28, that is another 0%. There is also 40% cap because that is the 
we have we have told the GATT and uh, uh, the tariff, you know, we have accepted that it will not be more than 40 percent. So, 20 percent state and 20 percent uh, central government. That is a 40. There is a ceiling. You cannot charge more than that. So, the government found out another way of charging higher tax by way of cess. So, if it is 28 percent plus 15 percent, 43, it exceeds 40 percent also. So, it is possible in tobacco, in um, um, aerated drinks, this is going to happen. It may exceed 40 percent also. So. 5%, 12%, 18%, 28%, then you also have 0% and you will have 40%, you will have 28% plus 15%, 40% to be illa. Right now, last week, what we saw? Gold? 3%. So, then one more slab which is not at all there in any of these slabs. Why they brought it? They cannot put it in 5% because it will be very expensive. Right now, 1% um, uh, central uh, excise and 1.24% or something, VAT they are paying, 2.25% to get around. So they made it 3 percent, okay. And as a matter of um, or a cautious approach they are doing, if at all there is an issue, they fit it slightly at a higher rate so that they can reduce it later, okay. If they fix it at a reduced rate, it's very difficult to increase it. And if you look at inflation part of it, whether GST one, it will lead to inflation. Um, they keep on telling us that the consumer product, uh, consumer price index products more than 50 percent is not coming under GST, like uh, rice or wheat or uh, healthcare or education, certain things don't come under, um, of course education is not part of that, but CPA is 50 percent of male, it is not coming under GST at all, completely exempted. It is exempted from GST, which is part of, so it will not lead to inflationary pressure, I think the government would argument. Not only that, even in the taxable thing, if you look at it, there is 7 percent exempted, then 5 percent to 14 percent, 12 percent to 17 percent, and the majority of it comes under 18 percent. So, this is what is happening, and what we should remember is this 18 percent includes both components, central excise as well as VAT, right. Most of us forget that we think that the VAT is becoming 18 percent. Of course, I think this is an area in the paper that we have seen it, I will skip this. Okay, now the structure is that it is something similar to VAT. VAT is not the same as VAT. VAT is not the same as VAT. Manufacturer builds it and then wholesaler claims back the GST and builds it to retailer. And retailer claims back whatever he has paid when he makes it and collects it from the consumer. And this is the system how it functions. And with an example, next to three or four slides, I will be sharing these slides with them, some of them. So you can, if I know local supply of goods, Within the state, no ruba abdina, porlo dal no ruba abdina, CGST 10%, STST 10%, 10 plus 10, 20, 100 plus 20, 120 varum. Okay, same state larda. Similarly, services, either one the goods, either one the services, same state larda. Tamil Nadu le vandu or chartered accountant is billing someone else. Sir, are you covered under CGST? I don't know whether you are covered under GST. You are, right. Advocates were exempted earlier on service tax. Doctors are exempted. Okay. Uh, I think we wish we have a chartered accountant as a finance minister. <laughs> okay. So CGST 10% and 10%. Eh? Uh, <laughs> so 100 plus 10 plus 10, 20 are they same level over? Within the same state, I the the tax is GST split into two components. This is what I mentioned earlier also. Something may be repetitive, but just to give a better clarity. 10% CGST amount, 10% SGST amount. Yeah, I mean, when state is entitled for its share and central is entitled for its share, it goes. Okay. But when it is sold to other state, there are 30 states. We don't know which state we are going to sell. So they call it as IGST, collect it, and then they split it and give it to the state where it was sold. Right? That is the basic principle behind it. Again, 20%, but it will be 120 rupees. 100 plus 20, 120. Here also 100 plus 20, 120. Now, next to three slides, as I mentioned earlier, next three slides are very important slides. Now, just an example. See, all these examples given in the website by uh, the government are mostly favoring GST. Okay, I have reworked, I have some Excel sheet which I can share with you. Still, it is favorable, but not to this extent. Now, let me give you two scenarios. The first scenario is the current scenario. Now, there is a VAT. The second scenario is the GST scenario. Okay. Producer 100 rupees, manufacturer our day expenses, value addition number right point rather 150 rupees to build point rather much more. Other central excise 12.5 percent, assume that 12.5 percent, 19 rupees will be the central excise. 
150 plus 19, 169. Then there will be a CST on it, 3 percent, 169 plus 3, 172. Are we clear? Okay. Next, the 172, our own the wholesale is weaker. Our he does the 20 rupees value addition. His cost is 192. He'll be billing to the uh, uh, next person. But on the 192, la, there is no central excise because he is not manufacturing. He is only a dealer or a trader. There is no central sales tax because he is selling within the state. Now there will be a VAT of 12.5 percent, which is about 24 rupees, and the total 192 plus 24 is 216. Now he cannot take credit of this 3 rupees, he cannot take credit of this 19 rupees in the earlier scenario. When GST comes, he can take credit of this. Okay. Now go to this 216, the retailer sells at you know 30 rupees value addition, 246, and in this 246, there is no central excise, there is no uh, uh, CST, there is a VAT of 31 rupees at 12.5% on 246, but he can take credit of this 24 rupees. So the ultimate price is 31 minus 24 plus 246 is 253, right? Now look at the new scenario, 100 rupees plus 50, same 100 plus 50. There is a GST of 18 percent. Now why not 48 percent? So 18 is the middle, so they have taken in the example, no, that is what we should think. But 20 is 27 percent, so 177. 177, same 20 rupees value addition, 197, he bills it. 35 at 18 percent on 197 is 35 rupees, but he can take credit of this 27 percent. Now 205. Now look at the 172 as is expensive. At the producer level when you look at it, when he builds it 172, 177. But when it comes to the wholesaler, when he builds it to retailer, it is 216, here it is 205, it is less. Right? That is basically because he is able to take credit of both the components. As of now, you can take credit of only VAT. But hereafter, you can take credit of the central excess component also, which gets built into GST indirectly. Now, that is the main advantage and because of which there should not be any cost escalation or inflation because of GST. Unless otherwise the GST rate itself is fixed at a higher rate, okay, than the present one. Now, this is another example which, um, how it functions between state, I think, uh, or I will go to the next example which can give a better, this looks a little cluttered. Okay, you look at this example. Somebody is selling a product at 10,000 rupees, right? A is selling to B, and both of them are in Maharashtra, same state. Now, same state na n apply ho? Both applicable. CGST plus SGST, both are applicable. Okay, and 18% uh, is the GST on it. Now, that is split into two: 9% for SGST, 9% for CGST. So, how much is it? On 10,000, it is 900 rupees for CGST, 900 rupees for SGST. This 900 rupees should go to, it is not going to, should go to, we are only looking at the accounting part of it. It should go to Maharashtra government. This will go to central government. Now, Maharashtra government is selling to Rajasthan. And the 10,000 rupees, one another, he is adding some value and he is selling at 17,500 rupees. Again, same 18% because GST is not going to change, okay? Because in the future, GST regime, it's all the same tax, okay? Now, 18% on 17,500, how much is it? 3,150. Now, the entire 3,150 will go to IGST to the central government because it is between two states, right? So, 17,500, 3,150 should go to nothing to Maharashtra. Now, Rajasthan La Wangra Rundi, he sells it again to somebody else in Rajasthan, which is within the state, which is intrastate. Now, what happens in intrastate again? Two components come into play, CGST and SGST comes into play. He sells at 30,000 rupees. 30,000 rupees, 18% is 5,400. 5,400 split into 2 is 2,700 and 2,700. 2,700 goes to Rajasthan government, 2,700 goes to center by way of CGST. Now, if you look at it, between the states it is IGST, within the same state it is CGST, central part is called CGST, state part is called SGST. Are we clear? I will move to the next slide. Any doubts? See, next, now this is the accounting part again. Now, first one, the A to B, one, the Maharashtra to Maharashtra, right? 10,000 rupees is the price at which he sold. 9% is the Maharashtra government revenue share, 900 rupees. Central government again 9 percent is 900, right? The first row is uh, clear, right? Now come to the second row, Maharashtra to Rajasthan, okay? 17,500 is the sale price we saw. On that, 
there is only one component of IGST is applicable at 18 percent which is about 3150 in the path only at 3150. Now that is due only to central government okay but he is not going to pay 3150. He can take input credit of this 900 which was paid to Maharashtra SGST credit and this 900 which should be paid to central government CGST. So 900 plus 900 credit credit to the kapro, he has to pay only 3350. All right. Now next come to the third part. Within Rajasthan, he sells to another fellow in Rajasthan at 30,000 rupees. On 30,000 rupees, 9% SGST is 2,700. Another 9% is CGST 2,700, right? 5,400 split. This is what he has to pay. This, this has to be paid to central. This has to be paid to Rajasthan. But he need not pay. Now he is going to take input tax credit of whatever tax already paid. In the 2,700, okay, and the, now this is where you should be very careful. Which gets priority? What gets priority is central government tax, whatever tax paid to central government. So 2,700 CGST, out of this, he will take credit of 2,700 IGST credit. Balance 2,700, 3,150, how much is it? 450. That 450 he can take credit against SGST. Okay. Balance 2,250 is due to Rajasthan government. Now you look at it, 900 is due to Maharashtra, Rajasthan is 2,250 and central government is 2,250. Though we spoke about much higher amounts here. Okay, this is what it is a balance. But again, it is not correct. It prepared the statement of accounts. Now how much actually is going to get paid? Income to Maharashtra government. This is the third slide. I will stop with this slide. Then we will go to the other part of it, conceptual part of it. See, 900 rupees is due to Maharashtra. But Maharashtra government has to give to give that 900 to central government because if you remember he has taken a credit here, SGST credit, which is due to central government. So he has to give that 900 and Rajasthan one day 2700 over input credit in the 450 that he has to return it for 2250 but again transfer from central government will be 2450 so 2700 he will get it. As far as central government is concerned this 900, 3150 which we saw in the earlier this picture 3150 plus 2700 these three are due to central government which is 6750 but credit taken is this 900 plus this 2700 so 3600 if you remove that 3150 is only due transfer from Maharashtra is 900 transfer to Rajasthan is 450 this 450 2700 now net to net the tax is 5400 if you look at this picture this is the final tax paid right this 5500 every post have been part of now 2700 goes to Rajasthan, 2700 goes to central government, to Maharashtra nothing, Maharashtra is a state which manufactured and Rajasthan is a state which consumed but did benefits. Now this is how GST consumed. When I leave this with them I think it is available on the net also you can take a look at it. These three slides summarizes everything about how GST functions and how we have to account for it and how we have to pay. Okay. Now, Okay, again, this is again uh, same thing, put it in a different uh, format. Now, how do you adjust, take credit? Which gets priority over which? If you CGST credit or IGST credit, you can adjust it. Excess is the same thing. CGST credit can be adjusted against CGST or IGST. Because both are central government. So, it can be adjusted. Now, SGST is only state. It can be adjusted against either SGST or IGST because IGST has got a two components. So it can be adjusted. Now IGST can be adjusted against all the three. IGST can be adjusted against IGST first preference. Second CGST because that is against central government. In case if you have still surplus then it can be adjusted against SGST. This is how you take credit. Right. Now these are all the forms which uh, I think Chennai is very familiar with. And there is so some, you know, but they have brought in another two forms, you know, I think written on uh, TDS or uh, 13th or something you have to file and 17th you have to file. I don't know why they keep, see that GST 1, 2, 3 is basically, in all these three return, if you look at it, most of us are going to file these three returns. Unless otherwise you come under a composite scheme. If you are a small trader, your annual uh, turnover is below 50 lakhs, you can opt, you can choose. Within the, yeah, within the state, because the interstate, uh, outside the state it, it becomes a problem because the other state will claim the revenue. So you cannot do that. If you are doing business within the state and if your annual turnover is below 50 lakhs, you can opt for composite scheme. 
where you only pay a fixed rate of um, uh, maybe about 1% in certain cases and 2.5% plus 2.5% in case of um, restaurants. 1 plus 1, 2.5 plus 2.5 and uh, third one is 5%. So, <coughs> 5 plus 5. These are the three available in composite. I will explain about composite scheme later. But if you are not opting for composite scheme, you have to file these three returns. This is on 10, this is on 15, this is on 20th. Now, do you really have to file it? It's not necessary because if let's say that if I am a dealer, most of us are traders or dealers. When I bought something, let's say that I am a Samsung dealer. Samsung would have filed their sales details on 10th GST or one lakh. My return, my, I have to go on ticket on 15th because that's my purchase. Because sales on the 10th, purchase on the 15th and then reconciliation and final return on 20th. So, sales on the automatic, somebody else has done it. Now, I only have to go on the ticket that I have yes, bought it. Now, if there is a dispute between this, there is an issue, there is a reconciliation which has to happen. If reconciliation does not happen, then there will be a problem. That's where the GST rating comes in. I will tell about GST rating later. But now, GST 3 is 20th, it's more of a formality. Once these two are agreed, it is automatic. Okay. In all the three are online, automated. Uh, you only have to upload it. I mean, it's already there. You only have to go. <coughs> now, compliance rating is going to come in. Like credit rating, mother. Now, compliance rating is going to come in. And this is only an example. Okay. I don't know what parameters they have kept. If you fail to file the returns on time, if there is a discrepancy on the returns filed, then your rating will come down. Now, for example, if my rating is only 80%. Now, I am applying for a refund of 100 rupees. I may be getting only 80 rupees. If my uh, compliance is 100%, now I am just selling an example what was quoted there. It, I don't know what, what is in the government's mind. They will come out with this uh, credit. Uh, what will be the impact of this? They will come out with the rules and regulations. Okay. But basically, you have to comply with all these rules and regulations. If you are not going to comply, it is going to affect your uh, uh, credibility, your business functioning, operations, fund flow, cash flow. Not only that, Nama complaint the bottom of the vendor complaint the entire network has to be compliant. Otherwise, there will be a big problem. And we may not be dealing, we may not deal with such people in the future. The, somebody is not compliant and I am compliant, I don't want to deal with him anymore. And there is also a reverse charge mechanism which is also going to make it more compliant. Okay. See now, uh, okay, there is another thing called uh, there is a confusion. I mean, it's not a confusion, but it, it can create some problem. Composite supply, mixed supply, and renda perigranga. What is a composite supply? Composite supply, it is, it is um, there are two conditions it has to fulfill. The condition number one is supply of two or more goods or services together. It's bundled together. And it's a natural bundle. Goods or services are usually provided together in normal course of business and they cannot be separated. Okay. Now, what does it mean? Where goods are packed, Amazon is sending a goods, I am ordering something, it is also insured. Insurance insurance is a package along with the product. So, it is a composite supply. Okay. So, that is, and the tax liability and the principal supply and the rate apply. That is what they say. Okay. So, the first condition is that it should be a natural bundle, it should not be a, uh, in fact, one of the examples which I give, I do not know. I understand or I don't accept that because they say that bed, uh, uh, bed and breakfast or American plan or modified American plan or other quote pantra. But see, it can be sold separately. Breakfast can be sold separately. Room can be rented out separately. I don't think it is a natural bundle. But in one of the examples, they are quoting that. So it should be a natural bundle. Then it is called a composite uh, supply. And the tax applicable is the highest rate of tax applicable in that principal supply. Okay. Now you look at mixed supply, again two or more individual supply of goods or services or combination and each of these items can be supplied separately and independent of other, okay. Like if I am buying a magazine subscription, if I subscribe to a magazine, they give me a handbag. The handbag can be sold separately, magazine can be sold separately. So it is not a natural bundle, which means it is a mixed supply. And for this also, you know, uh, when it is it, it, it's a highest rate of tax of uh, that product will be applicable. Uh, this is another illustration which uh, even booking of train ticket, when we book a Rajdhani train ticket, the, it comes with the food. 
the, the food provided in the Rajdhani will not be sold separately and the ticket is not sold separately. It is a natural bundle. That's how, that's the example they are giving. It can be disputed. <laughs> now there is another issue in calculating the turnover. Okay, aggregate turnover, taxable turnover. You, you, I think some of you who have met, you may know what is aggregate turnover. You have to pay VAT. Okay. On a taxable commodity, if you are dealing in a taxable commodity. If you are dealing in a non-taxable or exempt commodity, there is no limit. Okay. But if you have to the limit is raised to 20 lakhs now. The 10 lakhs has become 20 lakhs in GST. But then, the peculiar thing they have done is that, the entire is exempted um, from GST. But just 25,000 rupees you are doing a sale of a product which is taxed under GST. Now your aggregate turnover will be calculated as 21 lakh 25,000 and you have to pay tax. Of course you have to pay tax only for 25,000 not for 21 lakhs. So it makes sense not to do these two business together under the same name, same uh, pan or whatever it is. You have to do this business in a different uh, uh, entity which has got totally a different, no connection between these two. Otherwise, it will be calculated as aggregate turnover and you have to register for GST. Just for a turnover of 25,000 rupees, you have to register. Okay. Now, reverse charge mechanism, I am buying a product from someone who is not registered under GST. Now, what I have to do is in simple terms, as though I have manufactured the good or I have produced the good or, no, I have to bill myself. And then, other uh, tax are calculated on it. Only when I sell it, I have to take the input tax credit on it. It is actually a revenue neutral exercise. But then, why they have brought it is to make more people comply with the regulation. They have brought it. It is already there in other uh, systems also. Okay, but it will affect the working capital and other things. Okay, and uh, stock transfer. I'll just uh, skip this. See, even stock transfer also um, in 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 different state. If they have the stock points, uh, that is a problem. Okay. If it is the same state, it is revenue neutral. But if it is different states, IGST is applicable. Even if I am transferring to my own uh, uh, go down or stock point in other state, I have to pay the stock uh, tax and then take it, IGST and take it. When I sell it, there will be IGST and SGST part. I will take input credit of IGST. So that is why I was mentioning, I was discussing with Ashok Leila and Hero Motor Corp and all. They said that uh, now they are seriously reconsidering the stock point and other things. Just for tax purpose, they don't want to have it. Only logistics demand it, they will have it. Now, maintenance of account books will be completely online. Now, Tally uh, has come out with it. The Zoho Corp has come out with a very nominal, uh, I think 2500 rupees they charge for the software one time. And uh, wherever you are sitting throughout, if you are traveling globally, you can access it 24 by 7. Cloud uh, software Zoho has launched for the small traders. That is worth taking a look at it. And um, and it has to be, and you can also maintain in very, very exceptional cases if they permit manual bookkeeping is maintained, but I don't think they are going to allow that, but technically it is possible as per the law. Okay, it can be exempted and it has to be audited and uh, audited uh, annual returns has to be submitted. So, three returns a month, 36 returns in a year, plus one return annual return. Composition scheme one day, if your turnover does not exceed 50 lakhs in a year, you can opt for it. It is not compulsion, you can opt for it. If you don't like it, you can also change it once in a year. You can go back. Okay. But the challenge is that the tax is your cost. You cannot claim it. You cannot pass it on to the customer or the retailer or the subsequent network. So that is, uh, you, you, you have to evaluate that and go to composite scheme. And uh, it's enough, the advantage is that instead of three returns in a month, it's enough you file only a one quarterly return, GST are four. You file in once in a quarter and then annual return should be there, I think. Three, four plus one, five. Okay. And switching over is possible. Uh, only if you are opting for composition scheme, where your turnover is 50 lakhs and your sales, your entire transaction is done within the same state, you can opt for a composition scheme, wherein your tax is, you pay a nominal tax and even today it is there for chartered accountants, you know, you have a similar scheme in income tax, you, know, you can have presumptive taxes there. So similar to that, you pay a tax and the number of returns comes down from 36 to 4. Okay. For the small traders, this is basically to benefit the small traders. Okay. And then, of course, the penalty, penal provisions I was discussing with him was very, very uh, tough if it is going to be, you know, if there are any, it can go up to, you know, imprisonment, imprisonment up to five years in case of any tax evasion and it is non-bailable. And, uh, of course, they have also given some exemptions that there will not be no arrest or frauds up to two crores, I think, uh, 
available. Okay. Uh, this I'll skip. This I will skip. Okay. Pharma companies were worried that uh, you know, they were stocking less and all. But if you look at yesterday's report, in the month of May, the pharma sales pan India has gone up by seven percent. It has increased by seven percent. And many companies are increasing the sale prices. If you notice, anti-profiteering provision one day they are bringing it. They are going to make it very serious. In a rare cases where the tax is going to incidence is going to be beneficial to the dealer, he should actually pass it on to the customer. If he is not passing it on and he is retaining it, I don't know what mechanism they will use to find that out, but I am sure they will innovate or invent some method. But if they find out that the government has given a benefit to you, to the dealer or to the manufacturer and it is not passed on to the ultimate consumer, it is anti-profiteering, punishable under that. Okay. So ultimately, government is looking at reducing their uh, infrastructure. If you see service tax, tanya, uh, central excise, tanya, customs, uh, path, tanya, customs or other. the other thing, VAT, tanya, now they are going to integrate everything. Um, it will take some time. Even yesterday, I had a discussion with somebody, some senior officials in central excise department. They say that work allocation, what part we are going to handle. So another 15 days is there. So, but ultimately, what they are looking at is cost reduction efficient uh, uh, you know collection of tax and uh, compliance will go up and because of which because of higher compliance higher revenue will be there because of higher revenue the budgetary deficit they are expecting it to come down which will lead to inflation reduction in inflation because government borrowing will come down all these things are ifs and buts it can happen it may not happen we don't know but generally it has happened in many other countries if there is a good governance okay i'll skip this digital marketing yeah. So ultimately, it is going to be one of the biggest game changer. Um, and people keep asking me that whether the uh, inflation will come down because of GST. VAT, VAT will bring down the uh, product uh, cost uh, inflation. It has not happened. So I strongly believe that because of taxation, the price will never go up or come down. It is a pure demand and supply economics. Taxation may increase it by 1% or 2% or decrease it by 1% or 2%. In 2008, because of the bad situation when government reduced the taxes, not many people passed on the benefit. Particularly the vehicle manufacturers never passed on the benefit to the consumer. They only benefited. So it can happen anywhere. And the transition provisions, if you look at it, something interesting they have done, a little broader approach they have done. One is that, let us look at three situations. The first situation is that, uh, this month end, that is 30th, uh, 30th, I have some stocks. What do I do with it? How do I take, uh, the, how do you handle the input tax credit? So that would be uh, one, the first condition they say is that I can take input tax credit, whatever as on date, it can, it will be transferred 100% to the new system, GST. That is number one. Number two, if I have stock on hand, which is bought within one year, the last one year, then I can take credit provided I have all the documents in hand. If you don't have documents, that's the third scenario. If I have documents, I can take credit 100%. If I don't have documents, the, and if there are certain situations, I don't know the central axis split up. So the companies are asked to work out the split and then give it to the dealers. So if they have given, you can take that as input tax credit. If that is also not there, the other option is that, the final option is that, you can take 40% of the uh, SGST or CGST, whatever is the tax, you can take 40% of that. Now that 40%, just two days back they made it 60%. 60% you can take. Okay. So this can happen. Now one scenario I am looking at Ashok Leyland, which has got a plant in Pantanagar, where there is no tax at all. They have given a tax holiday. There is no tax. So how how will you take credit for it? Now there is a dispute going on. See the same vehicle, which is 10 lakhs there, 10 lakhs in Chennai. A hosur plant also. If you buy in Chennai plant that is delivered from Chennai plant, you can take credit. But what about Pantanagar plant? Because there is no tax at all. But uh, I believe that you can still take tax because there the tax is there. Even in Pantanagar, the tax is there. But it is they have been given a five-year holiday. That's all. Only if the goods are exempt from tax, you cannot take any credit. That 60% credit you cannot take. But there it is not exempted. There is a tax, but they are not paying it because of the governmental concession. So that is one transition provision which is very interesting, they have done it. And um, this is the another working which I have done. I know we are 
running short of time, Ram Sami is already looking at the, see, if you look at it, most of us calculate, this is a, let's say the product, or, I mean, or, or you can skip the first two lines, you can start from here. The price is 150, the manufacturer sells at 150, at 12.5% central excess 18.75 and CST of 2%. There is no VAT or um, uh, this, uh, VAT credit you cannot avail because there is CST. So 172 rupees. The same example which I showed you earlier, I have reworked it in a different format. Now 172 plus 20 value addition 192. Now there is no central excess, there is no CST. This is an old regime or the current regime. 24 rupees will be the VAT at 12.5% on 192. And there is no VAT credit available here because there is no VAT paid here. Okay. So 216.14. You sell it, bill it to the retailer. The retailer adds 30 rupees value and 246, and there is no central excess, there is no CST, and VAT of 30 rupees 77 paise on 246. But you can take input credit of 24.02, 252. That's the price we saw there, 252 approximately in the. But the other example was wrong. I, I don't want to say it is wrong, but I am not comfortable with that explanation. I have reworked it in a different format. See, this 100 rupees is not 100 rupees. It has got. I am taking that this is built into it already. So I am removing that and making it as instead of 100 rupees it is 88.89 and adding the 50, 138 and there is a, um, a CST on it, a GST on it and 173 and 173 plus 20, 193 GST on it and taking input tax credit of 34, 207 and 207 plus 30 rupees value addition same 30 rupees, 237 and there is a GST of 59 but I am taking a credit of 48.4, 248. So it should be 250 to 248. This should be the difference. I may be wrong, but this was what came to my mind. So I have reworked it. So this is one thing. And uh, yeah, and uh, you can go to the this website if you have not seen this. Go to this website, the particularly the last one. They, you know, in, even in demonetization, I have been communicating through some of my friends to the government that you are not communicating properly to the public. Because demonetization was announced on that same day night, people thought that Ruvan would sell in Tanga. That's what was the mindset. That was not actually the fact. Okay. So, similarly, don't fail in this also because there is already a lot of problem in people's mind. Uh, I think a lot of feedback has gone to them. FAQ on the every meeting, they keep releasing. March 30th, April 1st, and they keep releasing FAQs. So all the frequently asked questions are answered here. There is about 200 page document in English. And it is also available in regional languages, Tamil. Simple Tamil for once. I think generally they translate it in a very difficult manner. But it is done very well. And that is available in that website. This answers most of the questions. Most of the inputs I have taken is either from the FAQ or from the gstindia.com website. All these illustrations are taken, most of it is taken from the these two websites. Very comprehensive document, it is available in a very simple manner. Um, translational provision upload in the last 15 days because every day things keep changing. So I have not seen it. So I, with that I leave it at that and if there are any questions I can answer. Super, super. Thank you so much, Anna. Yeah. I think Ramadan uh, is a classroom section, a big feeling. And in fact, people are making a lot of notes, they are writing the numbers into it. And of course, yeah, everyone is serious about it. They understand the depth of the thing that is coming through. And uh, now, in fact, you uh, can see it in the See, but now nobody can escape and they will have to really comply with it. And the Munnadi Patna Nere scheme is, in fact, uh, the uh, sales were happening more on the offers. Mad Vangna can do free. Either Vangna is free. In the Mari Odin, you free good value very present over Bola. So everything has been split and towed, and things are going to be transparent. It is pretty good. And uh, the floor is open for questions, and uh, people can. In an overthrow or industry, so uniform address it is very difficult. Feel free, if specific, this is my business, how do I really get impact? Probably you can just shoot the question. And uh, to be frank, we are very, very comfortable today. So we need not worry at all. And uh, I, I think this is the time for us to get clarity also. Three, right, super. So we have, we have a lot of people. and. Uh, if you need the mic, we can always pass it on, otherwise you can voice your concerns. And please in here. Please, first question from there.
suppose company A is manufacturing and is giving to company B. Maybe B is the director or partners of B and A may be related father son like that. So what is the situation? See, uh, you are right. Uh, arms length the distance you have to maintain. That's what is the, see. If if the product is sold at the market rate, the rate at which you would have normally sold to somebody else, if it is the same rate, if it is transferred, no issues. Uh, that is why they have come out with the valuation. If you are in doubt, if your hundred percent is going to go to the same, updating report, there is a valuation guideline available. Uh, I think it came in 2016. Valuation guidelines has come. I, I, uh, yeah, all, all the products it is there. So you have to adapt that parameter. Established. See, the basic, yeah, the basic concept is that it should not be done with the purpose of tax avoidance or tax planning. Once that is established, see, even if you look at input tax credit, service tax, on the service tax against us, just one more Now, service tax is becoming part of GST. You can take input tax credit for that also, adjust against the other GST, what you are going to pay. That is something very interesting, which will be beneficial to us. But again, what they say is that if I am buying a car, and which is not incidental to my business, okay, then I cannot take any uh, credit, whatever is related to that. But if I am having a tempo van to pick up 30 employees of mine to come to the office, that is incidental to the business. So whatever tax credit I can avail, I can avail in that. 